For our first critter, we're just going to use one ball of clay. Go ahead and put the other one away for now. We are going to start today by making a caterpillar. So I'm going to break off a little bit of my clay to start with. There's no right or wrong amount of clay to use. I just want to make sure I have enough for my full caterpillar. Put that small chunk of clay in your hands, close your other hand on top of it, and rub your palms in a circular motion. After a little bit, you should end up with some sort of ball-like form. If you don't, that's no problem. You can use your fingers to help you squish it and mold it into the right shape. I'm going to use the rest of my clay to do the same steps, but first I'm going to go ahead and pinch off how much clay I want to use for each sphere or each ball of clay. Again, put the little piece of clay in your palm, close your other palm on top of it, and rub in a circle. If you find that that way is not working well for you, you can also put your clay down on the table and gently rub your fingers or palms in a circular motion to make a ball. Once you have all of the spheres made for your caterpillar, you can start to put them together. I use regular white glue from a bottle to glue my pieces together. Tacky glue or Mod Podge it also works really well to hold your pieces together. If, after drying, your pieces tend to fall apart, you can always try hot gluing them back together. Think about where you want to attach your spheres together. Do you want your caterpillar to look curvy? Do you want it to look straight? Making your caterpillar on a surface that you don't have to move it is preferable. If you do need to move your caterpillar onto another surface to dry, make sure to use two hands to gently pick it up. Again, you can always glue the pieces back together now or later if you need to. One last thing I'm going to do before my clay dries is take two little pieces of pipe cleaner and fold them over into antennas. You can of course leave your pipe cleaners straight if you want to, but if you wanted to make them look curvy, you can take your fingers or even use a pencil to help you bend the top of it over. Now go ahead and grab your second piece of clay. This next critter is going to be a choice, so you can decide what kind of bug you want to make. First off, I'm going to show you some different forms that you can make to create your critter. This first one is a lot like how I started my sphere with a little piece of clay. Go ahead and put that piece of clay in between your palms, but this time instead of rubbing your palms in a circular motion, rub them up and down in a straight line. This form is called a cylinder. It's a good form for the body of a butterfly, a dragonfly, or maybe even another critter that you can think of. The second form that you might need to make a critter is one we've already made, and that's called the sphere. That is just when you roll a little chunk of clay in your hands. Last but not least, we're going to start by making a sphere, but after we roll it in our hands for a minute, we're going to take it, squish it into what's called a disc. This might be good if you're trying to build something that needs to be flat, maybe like the wings of a butterfly. I'm going to play around with my clay to see what I can figure out how to make.
once you figure out how each piece should fit together, go ahead and grab your glue and start gluing the pieces together. If you notice your clay is drying out as you're working with it, you can always spray it with a water bottle or get a little bit of water on your fingertips. Remember, if you want to stick in pipe cleaner antennas, do it before the clay dries. I have a little bit of extra clay, so I'm going to go ahead and make one more critter. I think for this one I'm going to try making some sort of ladybug. Remember that your critters that you make can be real or imaginary. For my ladybug, I'm using a sphere form, but I decided to flatten one end of it. So I'm just pressing one side of my sphere onto the table to make a flat side. Taking the last piece of clay I have and rolling that into another sphere to attach for the head. Cleaners also make really good flakes for your critters, so if you'd like to, you can stick those in too. You can also use a permanent marker to add some other cute little details to your critters. I'm going to add a face to my little ladybug, and then even some polka dots. Last but not least, we're going to add some color. You are welcome to add color with whatever materials you have on hand. The one I chose to use is watercolor paint. I like watercolor because I can blend my colors together on my critters to make some really cool effects. Like on my butterfly, I blended from purple to blue to green. You can also add some cool designs too, either with watercolor or with Sharpie once it dries. I hope you have fun making your critters and decorating them. I can't wait to see how they turn out.